Tibet had no roads, only trails, too narrow for wheeled transport. Wheels were only used for prayer. I seem to be walking across a picture out of an old book of legends. There must be a great destruction. Landscapes have a language of their own. Tibet in those days was a land of mystic mystery, a country of mountains interspersed by desolate plains. Wheels were only used for prayer. What had I dared to dream? Into what mad adventure was I about to throw myself? There must be a great destruction. Landscapes have a language of their own. Those who had spent their lives in the 19th century consulted their Bradshaws. Wheels were only used for prayer. I remembered previous journeys in Tibet, hardships endured, dangers that I had confronted. There must be a great destruction. Landscapes have a language of their own. Here, as in many other spheres, the future development had already taken shape in its basic features by 1890. Wheels were only used for prayer. Would I triumph, reach Lhasa, laughing at those who closed the roads of Tibet? There must be a great destruction. Landscapes have a language of their own. It is not possible to put on wheels a bedroom with fixed beds, a reception room, a dining room, and an open veranda. Wheels were only used for prayer. Would I be stopped on my way, or would I fail, this time forever, meeting death at the bottom of a precipice? There must be a great destruction. Landscapes have a language of their own. In the topmost berth, the passenger lay so close to the ceiling that he could not sit upright. Wheels were only used for prayer. Would I be hit by the bullet of a robber, or die miserably of fever beneath a tree, or in a cave like some wild beast? There must be a great destruction. Landscapes have a language of their own. Trains abroad travel, as a general rule, slower than our English ones. Wheels were only used for prayer. Many travelers had been stopped on their way to Lhasa and had accepted failure. There must be a great destruction. Landscapes have a language of their own. The train service is often very imperfect. Wheels were only used for prayer. I had taken the challenge by my oath and was now ready to show what a woman can do. There must be a great destruction. Landscapes have a language of their own. We spoke of trains, of schedules, of distant prospects and the thrill of movement, a variety of landscapes rushing by. I consider as the happiest in my life those days when, with a load on my back, I wandered as one of the countless tribe of Tibetan beggar pilgrims. We spoke of trains, of schedules, of endless vistas and experience of distance, a variety of landscapes rushing by. We crossed large meadows strewn with rocks of different sizes and shapes. We spoke of trains, of schedules, of curious turnings and an air of gentle mystery variety of landscapes rushing by. Villages were near enough to allow us to spend the nights in shelter. For my part, I preferred to sleep under the trees. We spoke of trains, of schedules, of an immensity of snow and a straight wall of blue-green glaciers, a variety of landscapes rushing by. The hope of seeing the end of the climb gave us courage and we endeavored to accelerate our pace. We spoke of trains, of schedules, of an awe-inspiring landscape and immaculate whiteness, a variety of landscapes rushing by. Words cannot give an idea of such scenery as we saw, standing on those heights, alone in all the world. We spoke of trains, of schedules, of trivialities and overpowering spectacles, a variety of landscapes rushing by. 
An unexpected clearing suddenly revealed, behind the dark line of tall fir trees, extraordinary landscapes of shining snow-clad mountains, frozen torrents, and glittering waterfalls. We spoke of trains, of schedules, of fantastic apparitions and gloomy, silent forests, a variety of landscapes rushing by. We looked at them speechless and enraptured, wondering if we had not reached the confines of the human world. We spoke of trains, of schedules, of moving deeper into strange and frightening landscapes. The convenience is most immense of feeling as you journey towards your destination, perhaps hot, weary, and dusty, or half perished with frost and cold, that your rooms are ready and waiting for you, with a meal prepared for your arrival, together with a well-aired bed, and a fire, if it be winter. I put the flint and steel and a pinch of moss under my clothes, sat down, and began the ritualistic practice. If one is not used to steep ascents or out of practice, one must begin one's climbing by degrees. Soon I saw flames arising around me. It is quite wonderful how very soon one finds oneself able to scale, without the least fatigue or loss of breath, heights that at first filled one with longing and despair. The flames enveloped me and seemed to burst out of my fingers and head. How have you done it, he asked. It is the fire of Tumo, she replied. Of course, all hill localities are subject to mists, which form always a certain element of bewilderment. Perhaps we may also take into account the great silence in which the country is bathed, that extraordinary silence that is heard above the loudest voices of the most furiously roaring torrents. The only plan is to sit down and wait, with as much patience as you can command. We spoke of trains, of schedules, of the beginnings and the end of journeys, a variety of landscapes rushing by. The world is nothing but a series of pictures. Wheels were only used for prayer. <laughs>